Well, hello and welcome to all of our gold delegates from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Public Relations Manager and MC for Gold Learning Online continuing education. Welcome everyone. We have Sean Walker here today for our Gold Midwifery 2017 conference. We're so excited that she's going to be teaching us on using research to improve the way we teach and learn vaginal breech birth. So welcome Sean. It's great to have you here today. Thanks Fiona. It's lovely to be here. Well, I've already had a sneak peek of what's coming up with your presentation, and I am super excited. I love that we're globally hearing more and more conversation about vaginal breech birth. But let's back up just for a little bit, because I would love it if you could introduce yourself to our listening audience today and just tell them a little bit about your practice and, and where you're currently practicing and what you're doing. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm a midwife and I live and work in Norwich, England, um, although I am originally American, so I have trained in both the United States and England. And um, soon after I qualified, I began to realize that there was a significant demand um, that people wanted to access vaginal breech birth services. Um, but there wasn't a clear pathway, certainly, to do that within mainstream services where you could draw upon the benefits of a multidisciplinary approach. So really, for the last five or six years, I've been devoting myself to forging that pathway and um, doing it with research to back it up. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I'm certainly glad that you're on that journey um, because it needs more people like you that are in the field who are passionate and who are listening because I think that's a lot of the thing is that the demand seems to be there from the the women and the families and so it's great to hear that you're forging your way through this so can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of your your life experience in your work Sean and what are some of the greatest discoveries that you've really seen over the years in your practice One of the things I've been thinking a lot about lately is um, the value of what I would call clinical academics. So someone who works clinically, attends births in my case, but also is aware of what is happening in a specialist area across national and international networks. And one of the reasons that's so important for breach is that a lot of times when in adverse outcome occurs, the learning just stops there and possibly sometimes it shuts down people's careers, um, sometimes it really is disruptive for a unit, but the learning kind of stops. And I find this a bit curious because we know from like the airline industry that when um, an adverse outcome occurs, they disseminate learning really well, both nationally and internationally, about how to avoid things. So, um, but we don't have the same sort of networks in maternity care that helps us to share learning across a wider area. And when you look at something like breach, which is a really um, not rare, but less common event, we really need such networks. And the more that I do this, the more I find that specialists who are academic and so relate to people on national, international levels, as well as being local, um, we are really human repositories for such learning and sharing. I hear stories from all over the world and that feeds into my practice locally, but also what I learn um, on a local level and hands-on feeds into sharing um, on a wider scale. And I think um, a lot of the talk has been about developing databases, but I think there's real potential for humans to, to do this sort of connecting work ourselves too. Wow, well thank you for that. I, I've never heard the comparison, you know, in terms of mater maternity care and um, the differences in, you know, with the airlines and how they, they do disseminate um, their practice, you know, absolutely when there's some type of adverse yeah. outcome and uh, very interesting because we're talking, I mean, it, you know, it is, it's about life here, you know, and uh, so very interesting. I love that. I'm. I, I might. I might. I'm going to talk about that some more. But I. Yeah. I just love that. It's great. And the fact that um, there needs to be this ongoing learning, um, yeah. because we're we're practicing, and some practices are dated. Uh, what we thought to be 
uh, true of certain things are no longer like we we have to grow and evolve and as we have more knowledge so yeah and i love it that you are connecting people i i know you are because uh i had mentioned to uh i'll just tell our audience but i had mentioned to sean earlier that you know i have seen a lot of what sean has been doing and uh, there's a lot of people talking about your work but that's great because if we're talking about it we're connecting and we can do that exactly. on an international international level uh so it's just fantastic well lastly before i let you go uh, why don't you tell our listening audience, our delegates, a little bit about what you're going to be teaching them uh, during this presentation and what you hope that they all take away from this. Okay, so what I hope you get out of this presentation is a bit of a research update. Um, some of the changes in the most modern research um, which underpins how we counsel women about the options of um, childbirth mode of childbirth when a baby is presenting breach, just so you can um, think a little bit about what kind of evidence you're going to incorporate into your own counselling. I want to talk a little bit about how people are successfully um, supporting breach births and what types of models um, are doing that well, so that if you were thinking of being an advocate or starting up a service, you can think a little bit how that's going to be structured. And finally, it's going to be a bit philosophical and theoretical at the end because um, I want to talk a little bit about my research about how professionals learn physiological breach skills. And that basically started from an assumption that we might just be doing it wrong. And if we just back up a minute and stop kind of keep spouting on about how we should do it and we should do it better and we should do it more maybe we look at the people who are doing it and think what have they done and is it the way that we do it most of the time or is it a little bit different and aren't we not to think about changing mainstream practice so um, the last presentation is just going to open up a little bit of um, free thinking about whether we might be going about things maybe not in the best way well, that sounds great. I am certainly looking forward to hearing the full presentation and it does excite me because this is something that, uh, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, it's not something that, you know, we've really analyzed well, I think, but there is starting, we're starting to see momentum about the vaginal breech birth again and I am just so excited that you're participating in you know that network of birth so it, we need we need many more of you sean but uh it's great to have you be part of it so thank you for sitting down and just chatting uh with me about this topic for our uh for our gold learning online education here using research to improve the way we teach and learn vaginal breach birth thank you again sean walker for being with here today it's a pleasure and thanks uh, thank you again to our listening audience for tuning in We'll look forward to having you back. Bye-bye for now.